Hi, and in this video, we're going to look at the importance of DNA structure for replication, which is copying DNA, and for mutation, so what happens when the code in DNA changes. So let's have a look at this uh, strand of DNA, and you'll see that we've got a, a grey bar, which represents the sugar phosphate backbone, and hanging off that are the different bases. There are four bases, and they're colour-coded. And if we're going to work out what's on the other strand, so remember DNA is a double helix, so there are two strands of DNA that um, are complementary to each other, that match up, uh, we have to use the base pair rules. So every time you have a G on one base, you have a uh, one strand, you have a C on the other. Every time you have an A, you find a T on the other side. Um, for a C, you get a G base. And for a T, you get an A base. So using base pairing rules, you can build the opposite strand of DNA and match up the base pairs. Now, how does this help with DNA replication? How do we copy a strand of DNA? Well, the first step is to pull apart those two strands of the double helix. Uh, this is done by an enzyme. And when you do this, you can now expose the letters, the bases, and use those to guide how you build the new copy. So what happens is you get another sugar phosphate backbone and along it you build the nucleotides that match the opposite base pair again. So every time you have a G, you have a C. A's tell you that a T needs to be opposite. C's give you a G. T's tell you there's an A needed. And the G tells you that you need a C. Let me just repeat that for the other strands too. So all the base pairing rules are used to match up the bases on the opposite strand. And if you're observant, you might have noticed that these two strands are identical to each other. And because they're identical to each other, we have copied the DNA and they are also identical to the original strand that we started with, which is how we can use DNA structure and the base pairing rules to do DNA replication. But what happens if there is a mutation? That um, means that there's a change in the DNA. So if there's been a change in one of these bases, what might be the consequences? So let's um, Let's, con let's assume for a moment that instead of that T, we've had a zap of radiation, perhaps, and the T base has changed into a G base. Let's have a look what happens as we move through the replication process. So the G is there, the strands have been pulled apart, and when we try to match up the new base, Instead of what we were expecting in that space, which is an A base, because T's and A's base pair together, we now have a G. So the enzymes that are copying DNA and matching up the bases notice that it's a G. So instead of putting what we were hoping, we now get a C on the copied strand, because G's and C's base pair. So now you can see that whilst this double strand at the bottom is what we would expect and matches the original. This strand at the top now has quite a significant change because instead of T's and A's, it's G's and C's in the base pair. And that's going to have a knock-on effect when this part of DNA is used as information to make proteins and it may cause a disease in the organism if the the mutation has occurred in an important part of the chromosome.